Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi addressing the U.N. General Assembly. This was yesterday. And in response, New Yorkers took to the streets in protests and also took to the wheel, too. Uh, we'll talk about this with the Executive Director for Iranian American for Liberty, Brian Lieb, joining us live now. Brian, good to see you. We, we've seen it. Trucks were seen driving around New York City. They were carrying billboards calling out Raisi's human rights abuses. Talk to me about that. Uh, clearly, this sparked um, a lot of passion on the streets of New York City, where the U.N. General Assembly was. What were they protesting? Thanks, Sean, for having me on. It's very simple. Uh, people were protesting Abraham Raisi and his entire administration for their vast human rights abuses. Uh, they are, uh, whether it's President Raisi or his entire administration, almost every single one of them, Sean, is sanctioned by either the U.S. or the EU for their vast human rights abuses. So when we heard about that, uh, heard about these trucks uh, going around New York City, uh, we were happy to, to share those videos uh, because people need to know the truth. Uh, and they need to know the truth about who President Biden and, and who, who his administration is negotiating with. President uh, Abraham Raisi is a terrorist. Uh, he has earned the nickname The Butcher uh, for his role in, in massacring thousands of innocent Iranians. And he most certainly also has the blood of Americans on his hands. The man's a butcher, the man's a terrorist, and we shouldn't be negotiating with terrorists. President Biden spoke at the U.N. yesterday, calling out Iran at one point here, uh, and talked about diplomacy. Here's that. And as we close this period of relentless war, we're opening a new era of relentless diplomacy. Oh, well, it was quick, but bottom line is there was one country that he pointed out, which was Iran. He talks about diplomacy, but, but you know, based on conversations that the, this administration has had, uh, the possibility of getting back into the JCPOA, the nuclear deal, uh, that President Biden, this administration, has shared a desire to, to be in again. Denuclearization of Iran as well. What are your thoughts on it? Was Biden tough on Iran? President Biden's been projecting weakness from day one that he stepped into the Oval Office, not just with Iran, but with all of our adversaries around the world. Uh, and Sean, I continue to scratch my head and all American people should be scratching their head about why President Biden continues to engage in diplomacy with the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism, with a regime that chants death to America, and with a regime that does not share any of the values that we cherish here in America. Diplomacy was going to fail with Iran from day one. Uh, I think President Biden knew that, but he was so committed, so he went all in. And it's a stark difference between President Trump. President Trump knew uh, that it was peace through strength, and he uh, put out the, the maximum pressure campaign uh, that most certainly uh, was hurting the Iranian regime. Uh, and of course, when President Biden came into office, he did a complete 180 uh, to President Trump's maximum pressure. Uh, President Biden has now, uh, I've, I've nicknamed him President Appeasement. Uh, he continues to appease uh, the mullahs in Iran uh, and other uh, adversaries all around the world. Before we go, you know, Congress has, uh, has recently met and they've been talking about the debt ceiling and, and trying to get the government uh, funded, at least for a certain amount of time they're able to do. But among the, the topics was the, uh, the Iron Dome defense system there in Israel and which Democrats want to pull that $1 billion funding for. Israel's our ally, if we're not mistaken here. Um, why is this effort being made, and what do you think about it? I think it's deeply shameful that AOC and the Hamas squad, or the Hamas caucus, as they've been nicknamed, uh, put this, uh, put this uh, restriction uh, on the spending. Uh, but I, I think it's very short-lived, Sean. It sounds like some of the moderate Democrats uh, are going to be voting on a separate spending package to make sure uh, that the Iron Dome is uh, fully funded, as it should be. Uh, and shame on AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, all of them, uh, for continuing to attack the world's only Jewish nation. Uh, and it should be noted, Iron Dome is not a, uh, it's not an offensive uh, um, uh, apparatus. It is defensive. It saves lives. Uh, so when, when AOC and her, her squad want to remove funding from the Iron Dome, um, you know, people need to be asking these questions about what's happening, but shame on them. And you know what? Iran, Sean, is, is the country that stands to benefit the most from this. Uh, whether, whether they do lift the funding or, or not, they're the ones that stand to benefit the most from this. They're going to continue to increase their sponsorship uh, of Hezbollah in Lebanon, in Hamas, in the Gaza Strip, because that's what terrorists do. That's their defense system. Exactly.